What is the primary purpose of hand hygiene and infection control? A. To moisturize the skin. B. To prevent the spread of infections. C. To reduce the need for gloves. D. To eliminate all bacteria from the hands. Answer, B. Proper hand hygiene reduces the risk of spreading infectious diseases in healthcare settings. The best way to break the chain of infection is A. Wearing gloves at all times. B. Proper hand washing techniques. C. Using antibiotics. D. Covering your mouth when sneezing. Answer, B. Hand washing is the most effective method to prevent infection transmission. Which type of precaution should be used for a patient with tuberculosis? A. Contact. B. Droplet. C. Airborne. D. Standard. Answer, C. Tuberculosis spreads through airborne particles, requiring airborne precautions. A nosocomial infection is an infection that A. Is caused by bacteria in the intestines. B. Is acquired in a healthcare setting. C. Only affects the immune compromised. D. Can only be treated with antibiotics. Answer, B. Nosocomial infections are hospital-acquired infections, often preventable with proper hygiene. Which PP should be worn when performing a venipuncture on a patient with HIV? A. Gown and gloves. B. Mask and face shield. C. Gloves only. D. Gloves and face shield. Answer, C. Gloves provide necessary protection from blood-borne pathogens during venipuncture. The OSHA Bloodborne Pathogen Standard requires A. Hepatitis B vaccinations to be offered to employees. B. Employees to purchase their own PPE. C. Immediate termination for exposure incidents. D. Healthcare workers to work without gloves. Answer A. OSHA mandates employers offer hepatitis B vaccinations to healthcare workers at risk. Which of the following is an example of engineering controls? A. Hand washing. B. Using needle safety devices. C. Wearing gloves. D. Placing a patient in isolation. Answer, B. Engineering controls like needle safety devices help reduce needle stick injuries. The correct order for donning PP is A. Gloves, mask, gown. B. Gown, mask, gloves. C. Mask, gloves, gown. D. Gown, gloves, mask. Answer, B. PP should be put on in this order, gown, mask, gloves to avoid contamination. Which disinfectant is commonly used to clean surfaces in a healthcare setting? A. Alcohol. B. Hydrogen peroxide. C. 10% bleach solution. D. Vinegar. Answer, C. A 10% bleach solution is effective in disinfecting surfaces against pathogens. Which of the following is considered a blood-borne pathogen? A. Hepatitis B. B. Influenza. C. Tuberculosis. D. Rhinovirus. Answer, A. Hepatitis B is a blood-borne virus that can be transmitted through infected blood. Needles should be disposed of in A. A trash bin B. A biohazard bag C. A sharps container D. A regular recycling bin Answer, C. Sharps containers prevent needle stick injuries and exposure to blood-borne pathogens. What should you do if you experience an accidental needle stick injury? A. Ignore it if there's no visible blood. B. Squeeze the wound to remove blood. C. Wash the area and report it immediately. D. Disinfect and continue working. Answer, C. Washing and reporting the injury ensures prompt medical evaluation and follow-up. A patient with C. difficile infection requires which type of isolation? A. Droplet. B. Airborne. 
C. Contact. D. Protective. Answer, C. Contact precautions are needed because C. Difficile spreads through direct and indirect contact. The most effective way to remove C. Difficile spores from hands is A. Alcohol-based hand rub. B. Antibacterial soap. C. Regular soap and water. D. Hand sanitizer. Answer, C. C. Difficile spores are resistant to alcohol. Soap and water are necessary for removal. The first step in cleaning up a blood spill is A. Absorbing the blood with paper towels. B. Applying a disinfectant solution. C. Putting on gloves. D. Calling housekeeping. Answer, C. Wearing gloves first protects against blood-borne pathogens before cleaning. Which type of precautions applies to all patients, regardless of infection status? A. Standard precautions. B. Airborne precautions. C. Contact precautions. D. Droplet precautions. Answer, A. Standard precautions apply to all patients to prevent the spread of infections. Which of the following is a fomite? A. A mosquito. B. A patient's wound. C. A contaminated door handle. D. Saliva droplets in the air. Answer, C. Fomites are non-living objects, e.g., doorknobs, equipment, that transmit infections. Which regulatory agency enforces workplace safety standards? A. CDC. B. OSHA. C. FDA. D. WHO. Answer, B. OSHA enforces safety standards, including the Bloodborne Pathogen Standard. Which of the following is a common portal of exit for pathogens? A. Intact skin. B. Saliva. C. Bones. D. Fingernails. Answer, B. Pathogens exit the body through bodily fluids like saliva, blood, and respiratory secretions. A negative pressure room is used for patients with A. Measles B. Strep throat C. Urinary tract infections D. Food poisoning Answer, A. Airborne infections like measles and tuberculosis require negative pressure rooms. When removing PP, which item should be removed last? A. Gown B. Gloves C. Mask. D. Face shield. Answer, C. The mask is removed last to prevent inhalation of contaminated particles. Which of the following is not considered PPE? A. Gloves. B. Face shield. C. Hand sanitizer. D. Gown. Answer, C. Hand sanitizer is an infection control measure but not personal protective equipment, PPE. The term asepsis refers to A. The presence of bacteria B. The absence of infection C. A disinfectant solution D. The study of viruses Answer, B. Asepsis means absence of infection, achieved through sterile techniques. How long should hands be washed with soap and water? A. 5 seconds. B. 10 seconds. C. 20 seconds. D. 40 seconds. Answer, C. 20 seconds of hand washing is recommended by CDC to remove germs effectively. Which patients require protective, reverse, isolation? A. Immunocompromised patients. B. Patients with tuberculosis. C. Patients with MRSA. D. Patients with HIV. Answer, A. Protective isolation is for immunocompromised patients to prevent infections.